Hello everyone, I am Ardermus and I'm going to be showing you how to uh, create seamless tiles for web graphics or other applications. Um, to begin with, you're going to need an image editor. I'm using Jask Paint Shop Pro, a pretty old version, I think 6 or 7. Uh, most image utilities that you have, uh, GIMP and Photoshop, have pretty much the same utilities available to you, uh, which should make this pretty easy if you're familiar with your application. Um, the other thing we're going to need is an image uh, of you know some surface that you'd like to tile uh, without having any seams. Now what I have open here is a graphic of the moon. It's pretty large so what I'm going to end up doing is just chopping out a section of this. Um, I'm going to come up here and grab my um, selection utility and I want to grab a, a small rectangle. I've already got one selected here on mine. Um, I'm going to do a, just a 200 by 200 pixel section of this image to make the calculations really easy for us here. If you have uh, feathering options or anti-aliasing options, you'll probably want to turn those off so you don't get any unwanted borders around your image that will show up in the tile. Alright, so the first step uh, is to take this selected section and we want to crop the image to it and that'll just uh, bump it down to exactly the dimensions we want. I can view my image information and I can see that I got a 200 by 200 pixel image. That will be helpful for, defi <coughs> for defining our grid. So what I want to do next is uh, turn the grid on and now you can see that you have a bunch of small squares and those aren't going to be very helpful so what we're going to need to do is uh, define the grid properties and we want to set it so we've got pretty much crosshairs on on the image so what we're going to do is set the horizontal spacing and vertical spacing to exactly one half of the dimension so that'll be 100 pixels for my grid size if you're if you can't see your grid lines very well you may have to change the line color mine's kinda hard to see so I'm gonna make it darker now what you can see is that we created a blocky grid that's exactly that divides our image up into quarters and that's what we want so the next thing to do is to make a copy of the image the entire thing we're just going to copy it. Now Paint Shop Pro is pretty nice because what it will allow me to do is paste, it, paste layers. Um, before we do that I need to set one more thing. We have to make sure that we have snap to grid set. And What that will do is snap any layers if you try moving them around they'll, they'll jump to the edges of the grid. And mine is already on there so we're just going to continue. Um, what I want to do now is I've taken a copy of the image and what I want to do is paste it as a layer. Now when I did that you can't see what happened but I have a layer on top of my original background layer and if I grab it I can kind of move that around. See how that slides? <clears throat> now the objective here is to get all of the corners of the image in we want to move each corner to the opposing corner so top left will go to the bottom right and vice versa and same with the the bottom left and the top right I'm gonna take the layer I'm gonna start in the bottom right here in this example and see how it kinda pops to the side there it uh, that's the snap to grid working it keeps us from uh, creating any weird offsets or something that'll give us strange lines. So I've done that, now it kind of messed up the image. You can see that it doesn't quite match anymore, and that's exactly what'll happen um, when we try to paste the original image into a web page. We'll get those unwanted borders. So I just moved this layer down, and what you can see back here is the background layer. I don't want to adjust that, so what I'm going to do is paste another copy of the layer. It's already in memory, so I don't have to copy it again. So now it looks like the original again. Now this time I'm going to take the bottom right corner and move it to the top left. Exactly opposite. That's what we want. And I'm going to repeat this process. 
paste another new layer. I'm going to move the bottom left to the top right this time. Make sure it snaps in there. And one last time, move the top right to the bottom left. And after I'm done with that, you'll notice I have several layers here. What I want to do is I want to, I want to take those layers and merge them down into a single flat layer. So I'm going to merge all and flatten this. And then I can turn off my grid because I don't need it anymore. And what we're left with is those ugly seams that we would see on our web page if we had used this original tile. So what we need to do now is get rid of those lines. And the best way to do that that I've found is to use the clone utility, or the clone brush. <clears throat> and in my program I can just right click on a section of the image that I want to clone and then uh, left click and just start pasting it over. Uh, in GIMP you may have to use uh, control left click and then left clicks from there to paint, to paint with it. I'm using, I'm going to use a fairly large brush here. I'm going to set it to 45 and you're going to want your opacity down so you don't get um, real rigid blocks that are kind of glaring. You want it to fade together and blend. So we use a low opacity on that. I'm using 35 on mine. So what I'm going to do is to get a little extra precision, I'm going to zoom in my image here. So and then I'm gonna, just going to pick an arbitrary chunk of this and I just right clicked right here and now I'm going to start pasting it by left clicking and drawing with that section. You'll notice that line just disappears like magic. So I'm going to keep doing that until my lines are all gone. I'm going to grab a little piece from over here, mix it up a bit because really you're, what you want is to have a, a tile that's as random looking as possible so you can't really tell that it's a tile. Otherwise, when it repeats a hundred times on your web page, you know, it's, it looks kind of hokey and predictable. Um, one thing that I caution you about is that if you paste along the edges, you can create new seams that weren't there before. <clears throat> All of these edges on the outside, because they were originally on the inside where the image matched just fine, they all splice together just uh, perfectly. So there's no seams out here right now. They're, the only seams are the ones you can see here that we're erasing. So we want to maintain that by not getting too close to the edge. We don't want to alter that edge, otherwise we're going to be creating new ones. Um, so another thing you're going to want to do is try to get rid of any glaring features. Like I said, they will show up inside your tile and make it look less random and you really want it to look fairly random and, and mixed up. Kind of creating some new lines here. You got to be careful of that. So you can see that those lines are pretty well faded out now. I'm going to go ahead and knock down these dark spots because those are going to show up as predictable patterns. Also, these these larger lumps in the image. I'm just going to I'm not going to destroy them entirely. I just want to kind of fade them a little bit make it look a little more uniform across the board. Take a little piece here. I'm gonna fade that out. Now if I, I gotta be careful here otherwise you can see I'm changing the border and I may end up with a new scene that I'm gonna have to fix if I'm not smart about how I do this. Okay. I am fairly well satisfied with this so far. Looks pretty pretty clean if you ask me. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to reduce it. This is this is what my tile looks like now. Now if I preserve my edges, I shouldn't have any seams left. I've got a single layer left over. Now one thing you can do is uh, create a new image with dimensions large enough that you can paste a few chunks of your tile in to test it. I'm going to create an 800 by 800 section. That should be pretty good sized. And then I can just take this this uh, image and copy it and then paste it as layers into my new one and see what it would look like if I tiled it on a web page. There's one layer. I'm going to just paste another one. And I'm going to stick them together and see if they are seamless. Look at that. That blended nicely. So there's no seams visible there. How about if we go uh, top to bottom? Well that's equally as important. So let's uh, paste another layer and see if it fits on 
Look at that. No lines visible. That means I could paste this, you know, uh, like repeat it indefinitely without any seams. That is good news. So we're done. That's all there is to it. All you have to do now is save your image and uh, use it on your website as a background or whatever you would like to do with it. Uh, thank you for joining me. I hope it was helpful. Take care. Bye-bye.